Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Hao from Microsoft Research. Uh, today, I will talk about um, a century of science. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, our talk is a little bit different with previous ones. So um, I just shortened our titles because it's just simply because um, it looks prettier. Um, this is a joint work with Yu Xiao, Zhi Hong, and Quan San from um, Microsoft Research also. All right, um, just a minute. So we, we all know science. Science is really important to us because our daily life was just, just becomes much better because of the, all the innovations in science, right? So the progress in science has advanced the development of human society uh, across the history. We see dramatic re revolution um, in many technologies like uh, information theory, uh, genetic uh, uh, cloning, and artificial intelligence. For example, um, this information theory uh, te technique just changed our life multiple times. Um, like it led to the successive uh, inventions of, um, for example, telegraph, uh, telephone, television, and also a uh, more uh, recent example is uh, internet. Of course, we are not talking about all these uh, um, science problems today. We're talking about the science of science. So what does it mean? So, um, many thanks to the digitalization of uh, scientific publication over the past century. Now we had a great opportunity to study the development of science by using the science, uh, that is so-called the science of science. Uh, there are actually lots of papers uh, actively working on this problem, um, but mostly focused on how to measure the impact. Like um, this is an Asian uh, paper like talking about the impact factor, um, and this is a more recent one, talk about uh, how H-index um, works, um, which is widely adopted by lots of researchers. Um, a more recent one is uh, how do you predict uh, the impact of, um, um, of future research? So um, a less studied problem uh, is uh, the evolution of science. Uh, there, there is a couple of papers talking about the evolution of science, like uh, this paper, which is called The Century of Physics. You, as you can see, like our title is motivated by this paper. Um, but um, uh, it, also, you can, you can see from the title, it, it only focuses on the field of physics. So it's only limited in one domain. Another paper uh, also is a recent work. Um, it, it works on all the domains. However, um, it focuses on a very short span of years, like only 20, less than 20 years of papers. So in this work, uh, what we are conducting is a century of science. It is the largest scale and longest spanning analysis yet performed on academic data. Um, it includes uh, the analysis of nine, uh, eight, 89 million papers uh, across 116 years. Uh, we will conduct this um, uh, research in three dimensions, uh, they are the evolution of collaborations, um, the evolution of citations, and the evolution of impact. So we, we answered a lot of questions. We had a lot of statistics in the paper. And uh, we, also sum <coughs> Excuse me. we also summarized um, all the questions we can answer in a table in the paper. I, I won't go through all of this, uh, otherwise you can easily get bored, I guess. So I will only pick uh, some of them and just uh, give you some insights and some uh, findings we have. Uh, let's first look at the data. So it's uh, actually a subset of our uh, Microsoft Academic data uh, in the snapshot of 2016. Uh, it contains um, 89 million of papers, um, how, how do we select the subset? Uh, we actually follow the tradition that, will, uh, that was used by previous work. We just use these, um, the largest kinetic component to, to use in our analysis. Uh, in total, we have uh, uh, 53 million of authors, and if you construct a collaboration network, it has 1.2 billion collaboration links. And for the citation links, we have um, uh, around 800 million. And the years we studied across 
uh, is from 19, uh, year 1900 to um, year 2015. So um, next I will introduce uh, our findings in three dimensions. Uh, I will use three um, quotes, famous quotes, to motivate our, um, our analysis. The first one is uh, actually from Helen Keller, a famous uh, author from the United States. Um, alone we can do so little, um, but together we can do so much. So you must know this is talking about uh, the collaborations. Um, let's first look at the, uh, the growth of science. In, in the left figure, you can see, uh, because the y-axis is in the log, log scale, you can see the science grows fast exponentially. Uh, the red line uh, represents the number of papers uh, across different years, and the dashed line um, indicates the number of authors across different years. Um, if you want to calculate um, the warning of um, scientific publication, we can see like um, it doubled every 12 years uh, in this time frame. Um, for collaboration, um, we, we also calculate some statistics. Like for each paper, if you calculate the number of authors, you can see um, from the red line, actually uh, nowadays we have, um, if you can see my point, uh, it's right here. Uh, it, it actually tripled, the, op the uh, size of the publication authors list tripled over the past uh, 116 years. That means a lot of people started to collaborate recently. However, the um, productivity didn't change too much, uh, which is the second line over here. Uh, that's the number of papers per authors. So you can see it's almost, almost a, um, a constant value like from, ranging from 2 to 2.5. <clears throat> Let's talk about collaborations. Um, there are some other research, um, especially in uh, Brown Woods' group. They published um, a, a few science papers talking about collaboration styles. Uh, this is one of the conclusions um, in, in the 2007 science paper. Um, in the uh, early 20th century, um, they only computed the percentage of papers with single author versus the, the percentage of the papers have multiple authors. You can see like 80% of papers only have single authors. But this changed a little bit in 1950s. It's kind of like a, um, almost half-half, right? Um, but how about now? Only 20% of papers have single authors. However, 80% of papers have more than one author. <clears throat> so we extend this uh, study a little bit. We just dive in a uh, into, the, um, into the multiple author case. As you can see, um, in, the in the early 20th century, um, still is, even for the um, multiple authors, it's dominated by two authors. Uh, in, however, this changed a little bit. We can see more and more papers have more than three papers. Uh, recently, this is what it looks like. Uh, we have even lots of papers which have more than six papers. If you um, plot into one single graph, you can see a graph like this. Uh, the redness means um, more and more papers. Um, the largest one we found is like a paper has more than 5,000. Uh, authors, which is in the domain of physics. Um, an interesting one is like, if you just select the top 1% cited papers, you can see, um, you, you can see the pattern is a little different. There are more than 95% papers has more than one, pa uh, has, has more than one author, uh, which probably indicates like, uh, if you want to get a highly cited papers, just collaborate with others. <clears throat> Then let's um, look at um, where do those collaborations happen. So we look at the country level. The, for those green lines, it's, um, it represents uh, the relative collaboration strength between institutions from the same country. And the blue lines represent the relative collaboration strength between institutions from different countries. And the red circles represent the top 200 most cited institutions in the world. And this size means the number of citations, relative number of citations, with Harvard always um, serving as the top one across 100, uh, this century. So our first observation, in the first quarter of last century, 
only 4% of the top 200 most cited institutions were located outside of US, UK, and Germany. You can see like um, uh, in the first quarter of last century, just dominant by these three countries. Um, how about the second quarter? As you can see, like the top institutions in Germany, UK, and uh, Europe at large drastically shrank during the, because of the World War II. Oh, because um, I also didn't mention uh, in our very first graph, right here, you can see, you can easily see two dips, right? So it's because of the World War I uh, and World II. You can see like um, uh, our creativity, our invention really um, stopped at that time. So as a scientist and researcher, we should all love peace. <clears throat> So um, just move to the third uh, quarter of last century. You can see like uh, top, institution, uh, top institutions start to emerge in other countries like Israel, Japan, Australia, and uh, North Europe. Uh, you can also see more and more collaborations across uh, countries. And uh, in, uh, also you can see like in the United States, the, the West Coast continued to emerge. A uh, lot of uh, nice, um, a university in the West Coast, like uh, in California and in, um, in New, um, Washington. So uh, in the last quarter of, of last century, um, you can easily see like uh, UK and continental Europe has already recovered from uh, the World War II. And you can see lots of um, um, cross-continental collaboration happening and also, the West Coast of the United States uh, become more and more important. How about now? Like, um, easily, you can see China, South Korea, Singapore in Asia, um, Brazil in South America become more and more important. They also collaborate a lot, not just uh, within the country, with all other countries in the world, especially Europe and the United States. So those are nice visualization. If you want to quantify those visualization, uh, we will get to this graph over here. Uh, this is a graph um, represent the percentage of global collaborations across different years. Um, different lines means different countries, and this red line means the uh, whole world in general. So you can see like the global, uh, the global collaboration actually increased 25 times over the past 116 years. Uh, you can see this uh, re red one over here. This, this represents the whole world in general. That's amazing. All right, um, let's move to the second dimension. Uh, if, you, if, I have been, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Let's look at the evolution of citations. Um, we can first see some um, statistics. Uh, first one is the self-referencing behaviors, it actually dropped a lot, from 30% to 10% for individuals, individual papers. In the country level, it dropped from 90% to 30%. As you can see, science becomes more open-minded and more broadly shared. Um, also, another nice observation is like, um, science becomes less myopic um, in the referencing behavior. Um, scientists are looking further than ever into the past uh, citing more and more aged uh, literature, leading to an um, increasingly visionary scientific discipline. Um, so next, uh, let's look at this graph. Uh, it's the uh, evolution of reference and citation shares. So let's uh, just, let me just explain the notation a little bit. Uh, on the very left, we have a graph over here, which means the Z means the number of citations, the same country cite, it's a separate citation um, by the same country. And X means the number of citations from this country to, uh, referencing from this country to other countries. And Y means the number of citations received from other countries to this country. So if you uh, just see the first, uh, first figure over here, it actually means um, like during the early 20th century, the US, Germany, and the UK actually created 95% of the word citations. Like this is the UK, 
mm, yeah, can, you cannot easily see it. This is UK, and the uh, light green one is um, Germany. Um, the same thing in the uh, right figure. You can see like 95% uh, 95, 95 of words um, citations are c also collected by these three countries. However, this number um, both shares were decreased by about half to fifty percent, around to fifty percent, which mean, uh, which means other countries uh, start to pick up. All right, let's um, uh, move quickly. Um, so this figure shows the. Uh, it shows a rate between um, the number of global in citations and the number of uh, global out citations. As you can see from the graph, like the US and UK consistently receive as twice as many citations. They cite others, which means um, these two countries normally still um, generate more impactful work than other countries in general. Um, since I don't have enough time, just skip this one. So let's um, move to the last dimension. Uh, science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. Um, let's talk about the evolution of the impact. So the first graph we have is the evolution of citation counts. Uh, this is a very straightforward graph. Um, this is just the number of citation counts after one year of the publication, after five years and 10 years and 20 years of, of the publications. As you can see, um, this number increased a lot, especially for after 20 years. This can be explained by lots of reasons, like, um, uh, as you remember, the paper, number of papers just grows exponentially. And also, we also observe that people start to include more references recently, like a paper have uh, sometimes have hundreds of references. Um, so this really gives rise to the critical implication for the evaluation of different publications generated at different time periods. <clears throat> and if you look at the rate between the number of citations of the top one institution and the number of citations of the ranked 200 um, over the past century, you can see that you can see that the gap between these two numbers, uh, the gap between the rank one institution and the rank two hundred institution, has drastically decreased. Previously, this number is like three hundred two. Um, it decreased about about like three hundred uh, thirty times to eleven. Right now, um, lastly, let's look at the D distinguished award winners. We we'll collect all the distinguished award winners from Nobel Prize and uh, Fields Medal. Um, you can see, like, uh, we just map to the countries. You can see, like, because the Nobel Prize was invented in Europe, right? So starting from uh, 19th, um, 20th century, you can see, like, uh, Europe, people from Europe get lots of Nobel Prize more than the United States. But uh, more recently, you can see the United States actually dominates um, those awards. You, you, can see, you can also see, like, um, lots of uh, other countries um, start to get more and more rewards. Um, one of the reasons is like uh, recently those rewards uh, has a trend to uh, to give to different peoples in the same year. All right. <clears throat> uh, let me just summarize because I only have one minute left. Um, um, this paper unweighs the evolutionary pattern uh, of science over the um, past 100 years. And science has increasingly become globally more collaborative, more visionary, and more diverse over time. Uh, we um, had lots of implications. Uh, one implication is for institutions and governments to better advise and craft research funding policy, like uh, just to support more collaborative research, and especially international collaborative research. And um, let me just spend one more minute to uh, talk about more data, uh, more on data, because a uh, lot of um, institutions uh, lots of universities uh, talk to us. They, they ask us how to get the data because they need this data for analysis, like uh, a lot of uh, a research from uh, MIT Media Lab and some research from Northwestern and East Western University. Um, so we have a um, 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 site for you. You can play with the data and, and also do some uh, fun research. Uh, you can just explore your some site, first of all, and you can log in and follow some topics and um, uh, also applications. 
uh, follow authors. Uh, this is um, um, more, more recently stats of our data. We have um, pay, uh, more than 170 million papers, um, 1.1 billion citations. Um, most importantly, we released the API. You can call our API, we host our, our API on Azure. Uh, we have uh, um, at least a 50K course per month for free. And you can also apply for our free credits, uh, Azure credits, should, should cover all your costs um, do, doing your research. So uh, those are three um, API interface you can have. Um, we are also developing more and more APIs. Hopefully this can be used um, widely by your research. Um, thank you very much. And the left, si left hand side is a sparkle for our site and the right hand side is the API barcode. Thank you.